Hey, everybody. It's the Drive School Podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman. Pastor Richard, how are you? It's good to see you, Harrison. Doing well. too. Good. Glad to hear it. Uh, I I love sitting down with you after your study because there's always all these fun things you bring to me to talk about. Uh, What would Jesus say about praise? Let's just go ahead and do it. Let's just go at it, right? Uh, Yeah. Well, you know, we're we're talking this morning. uh, As you mentioned, we have a a group of us pastors get together and we study for the upcoming sermon. And we talked about, it was Isaiah. Mm-hmm. And it says, the Lord God is my strength and my song. And uh, we think about all these instances as well in the New Testament where Jesus encounters people and he heals them. And think of the, the story of the lepers where the one comes back and gives praise. Um, mm-hmm. and, and I would say that when it comes back to praise, I think one of the ways is it's it's spontaneous. Not, no, I should say spontaneous. It doesn't just break out of nowhere, but praise itself, it comes from receiving a good gift, yeah. uh, receiving something that has come to us. And in this case of here, this text in Isaiah, uh, that the Lord is the strength. Well, because he's our strength, then he's also our song. And then we think of all those instances where people are healed, and then what do they do? They they drop their face in the dirt, and they give praise. They give thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. So I would say that, that the praise, what Jesus say about praise? Well, praise is uh, that which flows from being given good gifts. You say it that simple, being give good, give, given good gifts then leads to praise. Yeah, and and the Lord is pleased with that. Like it, it's one of those things that that God actually loves that that when we praise Him, not because He's in it for the, the the props, not because He just sort of loves our thank yous, but because it's a chance for us to actually reflect upon the good things that He's done for us, and then return all the more for for faith, for for, for more gifts in faith. Excuse me. Yeah. Well, I mean, if we just even think about this as a parent, you know, for those that are parents, they'll get this. And those that uh, are not parents, this is just a little insight of, of being a, a dad or a mom. Man, one of the greatest things in the world is when you give a good gift and you have that spontaneous hugging. Like I, I remember yeah. as a kid, I remember as a kid, man, it was uh, uh, this G.I. Joe. Now people are like, well, G.I. Joe's. Well, there was the G.I. Joe Rolling Thunder is what I wanted one year. Okay. I so badly wanted it. And I, and I had watched it on TV and on the cartoons and and the J.C. Penny catalog. And I've cut it out and had it on my wall. Oh, and take rolling, that communism in every yeah, aspect. Right. I love this. Okay. So <laughs> this Rolling Thunder. Now, you know, keep in mind it had, it had, it had, uh, it, was, it was six wheels and had two like nuclear warheads in it and had gunmen on it and so forth. And when I opened that thing, I remember just, my goodness, because it was expensive. I remember jumping up and running across the room, jumping into my arms of my mom and dad saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you so much. Thank you so much, so much. And I can about guarantee you, because as a father myself, when you have that gratitude that is in response to a good gift, it brings joy. Mm-hmm. Uh, it brings joy and and to be saying thank you to a good gift. And so we say thank you because our God is good. Our Lord Jesus is good. He gives us good gifts. And so we we return with by saying thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus, for these good gifts. Uh, we give thanks and praise to him who bestows good gifts. And 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 really it's 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 really cyclical if you think about it. This whole idea right. of, of everything is cyclical. We're giving good gifts and we give thanks and praise. Um we got the Lord God cares for us, and so therefore that's the reason why we pray. I've heard that said before that the prayer is the voice of faith. Uh, it's it's the voice of faith that has actually received good gifts, and then you return to the one that gives good gifts and the one who cares for you. And so the cyclical nature of the circle of being good, given good gifts and then responding with thanks and praise is, is pretty profound to think about that circle. It, it, it's beautiful because this is actually God then actually setting us up to receive even more from him to yet praise him again. Um, where do we start to see this sort of naturally taking itself, uh, taking its shape in the, in the worship service that we, we have on Sunday? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's everywhere. I mean, mm-hmm. it's absolutely everywhere. Uh, I think there's this almost like kind of, I, I, I say this to our new members that come to St. Paul's. I said, well, in our divine services, you're going to see kind of almost like a, a tennis or a ping pong match back mm-hmm. and forth, right? Uh, the pastor says, the Lord be with you. And then they respond with thy spirit. And there's this back and forth, back and forth. Um, or then probably the most simplistic one is when the pastor gets done reading the scripture, the pastor looks up and says, this, this is, this is the word of the Lord. Basically, this is the word of the Lord for you, for your ears yeah. to hear. And the congregation says what? Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thanks for the gifts. And so the divine service itself, is all about giving good gifts to the church. And so we come to church not to give our best to God, but to receive God's best in Christ Jesus for us. 
And so we come and we hear the absolution. Uh, we come and we receive the word. We come and receive his good gifts. And in response to all that, we offer up thanks and praise. Uh, and then we come back, what, again next week and the week after that and the week after that to continually be given good gifts. Right. And so we, we we lean into these gifts because this is the thing that our, our Lord has first given us, but also because it it, it sparks the, the genuine praise that the Lord would have us feel. But it also lets us then, as Christians, react to the reality that you're going to have more than one emotion. It's not always going to be praise. Sometimes the Lord would actually call you to lament, uh, to, to, to repent, uh, to, to mourn. And he gives you good gifts that are sometimes hard to call good in the moment. But uh, like we we just sort of moved from the season of Lent into the season of Easter, where our Lord gave us good gifts in his word to to sort of bring about a, a genuine sense of of remorse, a, a genuine sense of of sadness, um, a, of lament over over sin and 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 uh, sorrow over death in the world. And, and as we reflected upon those, when we we moved into Easter, when we were given the resurrection to reflect upon, praise became again just sort of abounding all upon its own because we were first and foremost subjected to the thing that the lord would have us have yeah yeah you know and and i think maybe a really kind of ties into this but a really neat thing to think about is this is we ask this question who is the audience and who's the speaker now um obviously if you go to a concert if you will uh, the people who are the audience are the ones who are sitting in the front or they're standing. And then the person that's the speaker is going to be the performer uh, performing a song or giving a speech and so forth. And we should ask that question with when it comes to our divine services, church itself, who is the speaker, who is the audience? And we would say that, well, contrary to what many churches have in America right now, many churches in America believe that the audience or the people that are come to the church are to to be the speaker and then that God is an audience of one that he is what to hear in our praises given him but that's actually incorrect we want to invert it God mm-hmm. is the one who is serving us the divine serving us and so he speaks to us and we respond and so back to your your, your point there Harrison uh, we look at what the Lord speaks he does oftentimes speak words of law uh, very difficult words which then as the speaker, it causes us as the audience to what? Repent. And then he speaks words of gospel to us, which then brings about and creates faith in us um, that we can receive those good gifts and then brings forth ultimately a thanksgiving. But even at the point when the Lord does speak words of law to us and it brings about conviction, we should also be saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you for exposing my sin. Thank you for showing me where I've been trapped in unrighteousness. Thank you, Lord, where I've been ensnared um, by wickedness or where, where I've gone crooked. My ways have gone crooked. Uh, thank you that you care that enough to what discipline me. And uh, that Thanksgiving can break forth from even those words. Right. It, it, it's it's genuine, even if it's not sort of exuberant and that's allowed. Like if you go to the doctor and he diagnoses the thing that, that has kept you up at night, like if I haven't been able to sleep and I haven't been able to keep food down for a week and I go to the doctor and he runs his test and he says, this is this is the name of what's wrong with you. I, I say, you know, thanks doc. I, I, yeah. it, I don't feel the greatest in that moment, but I actually have the name of the thing that's killing me. And now yeah. we can start to talk about the cure. And, and for that, genuinely, thanks be to God. Yeah. Yeah, thanks be to God. And so, yeah, well, when when He disciplines us, thanks be to God. When He uh, puts an embalming gospel on our wounds and heals us, we say thanks be to God. Mm-hmm. When He gives us assurance, thanks be to God. Uh, because again, you know that whole analogy that He's the speaker, we're the audience. Uh, that He speaks to us, and that He is the one that is active, and we're the ones that are what receiving from His word. Mm-hmm. Uh, that He is the shepherd, we're the sheep. That He's the potter, we're the clay, and so forth. I love it. Pastor, thanks so much. Hey, it's good to see you, Harrison. You too.